All right, we're in 3ds Max. We're going to take a look at Arnold and render passes. What are render passes? How do we use them? So this is just a quick introduction to setting up your render passes. We'll be taking a deeper look in later tutorials. So here we go. I have a scene set up and I have some Arnold materials applied to these objects. This is a car paint, which is quite reflective. And in my renderer, I have it set to Arnold for both the production and the active shade. And I do have to save the file output. So what we have is when we set up our renderer. So in this tab, we have our AOVs. And this is going to allow us to do our render passes. This is going to allow us to take our separate elements of our render and put them into separate files to be adjusted in post. So that when you get a render that's not quite what you want, you can go and change it outside of the 3D software and have more control over those um, changes. So let's go and take a look at this. We have different file types and the one we're going to be using is the EXR. The EXR is going to be the better file to use. If you're going into something like Nuke, it's a nice quality file. It allows you to make one file and have all your AOVs compiled into one file or you can have separate passes in separate files. So there's also deep, and this is a completely different thing. We don't have a full copy of Nuke, so I can't get in and show you the deep. We're going to be using After Effects, so we're just going to be using an EXR. Um, this is actually really nice. But we're going to be looking at the EXR. Now the EXR, if we go in here and we click on it, is going to allow us to do one of two different types of files. So we're going to say add AOV file and down here we can add an AOV in a single file or if we uncheck this it will give us one file for each section we click here. So for every selection we will get a different file if we uncheck this. So for the other render types um, except for the deep EXR you're going to have separate files for each of these and then you'll have to composite them in your post-production package. So again, we'll be using After Effects. So I'm going to go and just do a very simple um, render. So let's just go to our Active Shade real quick and do a quick render. And in this Active Shade, we have this RGBA. And this is just our render. If I add in my AOVs, which again, the production render is separate. So, but if I add them in the active shade, um, we'll be able to separate and look at these different renders in the viewport. So let's do that. We're going to add an EXR. I'm going to go in to built in and I'm going to hold down control and select the ones I want. So we're going to look at an alpha channel. I don't have any clear coats. So we're going to do a diffuse, and then the diffuse broken up. We'll take a look at those. We're going to come down and do a RGBA, and this is your beauty pass. We'll do a shadow mat and our specular. Let me just grab that, and that's all we're going to look at for this one. It's enough to give you an idea of how to rebuild the scene. So for this first introduction, I'm just going to leave our defaults. Tiled is how it's going to render um, using the buckets. And this is better for, it's, it's a little lighter on the computer. So just leave all your defaults. This is fine. So with our active shade on, if I click render, you'll see it has A at the top. And right now it's showing the beauty pass. But if I click on the A, now we're getting our alpha channel. If I click on Diffuse, now I'm seeing the Diffuse without our specular. So if we go down to RGBA, that's our beauty pass, and we have all the passes combined. And what you want to do is you want to be rebuilding this beauty pass in your post-production process in that package, and then make your adjustments to it. So you want to make sure you have enough passes to rebuild this. And right now we don't have transmissive. We don't have a lot of these other properties that um, we're in the list. So we do have enough to build this. We have the RGBA, we have our diffuse, 
and our diffuse is actually broken up into these three. So our albedo is the base color, our diffuse color, without any shadows or highlights. Our direct is the direct lighting, so it's the light source hitting the object. Our indirect is the bounce light. So off of the top of the teapot, we have some bounce onto the handle. And then off of the table, or the plane, we have some bounce. So that's our indirect. When we look at just our diffuse, we have all three together. So if you feel you need to make adjustments to some part of the diffuse, instead of just rendering this, you would render these three. I'm rendering all of them just to show you the difference. So if I, if I want to make my you know, base color and then come in and have my <coughs> direct light a little bit stronger than my indirect, I can make those adjustments in post. So we have a shadow mat, and this is going to allow us to mat out our shadows or make a mask for our shadows. Again, that's what your alpha channel is for. You can also do object ideas. I didn't set up any object IDs. We'll be looking at that in a later video. Our specular is the same thing. This is all of our specular lights together. And if we come in and we look at specular albedo, wherever we have above zero for our specular, we're going to get the white shade. Sort of like, not quite, but sort of like an alpha. And then we have our specular albedo, our specular direct, and our specular indirect. So if we take a look at the specular indirect, and I go straight to the specular, you'll see it is the specular indirect plus the specular direct. Again, if I come back to the specular direct, we have our highlights. And if we go to the indirect, we just have our bounce. So our reflections and bounce light. And again, in post, we're going to be taking these elements and recombining them. So let's take a look at that. I have all these render passes in the active shade. I'm going to go into production render, set that up. Built in, we want our albedo, excuse me, we want our alpha. Hold down control. I'm going to get my three passes only for my diffuse. I don't need this one. I'm going to come down and grab my beauty pass. We have to match that when we export. And then I'm going to grab these three passes. I'm going to click add and then render. And this is going to render out our files for each of those passes and will allow us to take them into a program such as After Effects or Nuke and recompile those. So in my render outputs folder, I have that EXR. And again, this is a EXR that is compressed in the one file. And then I just have a little uh, beauty pass render that I did as a PNG. I'm going to go and make another one. I'm going to go to render outputs and make a new folder. Um, two. And we'll set this one up. So I'm going to remove all these files. Again, we're in our production render. I'm going to make sure that I'm saving it with a different name. So I'm going to pick the new location, go up one, grab this folder, and then name this two. Click Save. Should direct the path to that. Use our AOVs. We're going to use a EXR. Add file, and this time I'm going to turn off. Um, for a single file. We're going to go in and use our alpha, hold down control, R3 diffuse, RGBA, I need that so I can check when we put these together, and our specular. I also want this shadow map. I don't need this, but just to render it. So we're going to add those. You'll see instead of the last time we got one file with all the components in, now we have a file 
named for each. So if I go back to the um, production, excuse me, if I go back to the active shade, that was all in one file. And now when we hit render, it's going to render these out. Take a look at my desktop. And go in, and now we have, instead of one file, we have each of these elements separate. So I'm just going to quickly open up Photoshop so you can see these, that they are the same that we were looking at a moment ago. And I'm just dragging them in to look at them. I'm not going to put them together. So if we go and look at our RGBA, it's just asking us how to read the alpha. You'll see that's our beauty pass, and if I go into my, we'll do our specular. So our specular indirect, and we'll accept that, and that's our specular indirect. So again, we can composite these in Photoshop if we have still images and make our adjustments to this uh, with our different blending modes and layers and levels and such. But if we're going to take an animation, then a program like Nuke or After Effects would be the way to go. So we'll look at that in a, in a separate video.